Hello, guys. Welcome back to our channel. We are Growth Hack. This is David once again, and we haven't been posting for, for a while. We've been doing videos, We've been super busy here with some updates that I'm going to share with you guys later. And today I'm super happy to have here Ivan from Sellerplex. Welcome. Hey, David. Yeah, good day. Good day to you. How are you doing? Yeah, all good. It's a good day. Yeah. Cool. Where are you calling from? Uh, so I'm in St. Petersburg in Russia. That's very nice. And this is the second time that we actually have an interview with someone at Sellerplex. We've been uh, talking with Nate before. Mm -hmm. So I'm super happy to have you here. And we have some very hot topic today for our, our readers, our listeners. Yeah, we will, we will also make a blog post out of this. So if you want to have the written version, you can check it out on our blog. The link will be in the description together with uh, links from Sellerplex and contacts. And uh, we're talking about the, the mess in the supply chain today. You know, costs are rising. You don't know when you will get your, your containers, if you will get it, you know, all this uh, big mess that is going on. So tell me, Ivan, well, first, why don't you introduce yourself and you tell us what you're doing with Sellerplex and then we can talk about this big mess of the supply chain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, thanks, David. Yeah, so I'm uh, kind of like yeah, a junior partner slash uh, head of the supply chain department at Sellerplex. Right. So maybe like just a couple of words on my, uh, you know, past so far. Um, so I've been in like logistics and supply chain industry since about 2008. So that's when I first started working for, for an importer back in St. Petersburg in Russia, then moved for a few years to, to the U.S., worked for like big uh, corporate logistics and also like family owned like freight forwarders there, then moved back home to St. Petersburg, where I'm calling from now. And also work for logistics, like a Dutch logistics company um, for a couple of years, then started my own e-com business. And back in 2000, uh, I think it was 2018 when we met, uh, when I met Nate and uh, yeah, start helping other sellers, primarily FBA sellers, but then also just uh, e-com sellers uh, with their supply chain needs. That's amazing. Um, so you've been in this industry for quite a while, you know, for uh, a few years, <laughs> a lot of years, actually. So you know what's going on and you have seen this industry changing. So when it comes to, you know, getting orders from from China, you know, bringing them to the US, to, to other countries. So um, sure. sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, to point out, like uh, we've seen uh, something similar to this happen back in 2014, 15. Uh, was related to some di different reasons. So there was like a crazy congestion in LA and rates were through the roof as we thought at that point, uh, maybe paying about five, five K or something like that for a container. Whereas now, you know, obviously it's a lot crazier. Like we are seeing rates up to 30 K per 40, 40 foot container, which is, you know, ju just insane. Yeah. And really hoping today to try to help uh, kind of like, um, with some advice, some recommendations on how to kind of minimize the damage for, for your business. Uh, yeah. Like kind of hard, hard times. That's amazing. You know, I've been actually getting a lot of inquiries regarding this, uh, how to minimize our loss. You know, if we are importing our products from China or even from other countries, uh, what can we do to minimize our loss? How can we, you know, uh, have a cost effective, you know, kind of economy here when it comes to supply chain and uh, where is all this mess coming from? What is happening? I mean, is it only for COVID or where is this coming from? What, what would you say here? Yeah, sure, sure. To, yeah, to maybe I answer the, the, the kind of latter question. Um, so there, yeah, a few reasons. I mean, COVID is a, is a big part of it, right? There are worker shortages, you know, people get sick, uh, you know, go, go on quarantine, there is shortages of like track drivers in the U.S. There, there are problems with the uh, you know spikes of the epidemic uh, at the origin in China. Uh, so that's definitely one one of the reasons. Another reason would be just like increased demand and like growing uh, economy, specifically e-com industry has has grown like crazy last uh, you know over 2020 and 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 has been you know it's been growing for years now. And so that there, there's like increased demand. COVID. And then also we're seeing a uh, lack of supply in the sense that um, current ports, which are already huge, like Port of LA is just insane. Like I used to live in, in Long Beach and, and drive travel at a port every day. Yes. It's like, you know, humongous, but it still, it, it doesn't have enough kind of room for, for all the volume of cargo coming in. So, uh, so the reasons are quite complex. And th as a result, we are seeing, yeah, due to like, uh, uh, 
high demand, lower supply, you know, crazy rates, uh, all kinds of delays, which ultimately results, yeah, in your uh, in you know these business owners having problems with their cash flow, having problems with their profits, and then uh, out of stock is a big threat, right? Because you know with all these yeah. delays, the biggest threat I would say is out of stock, right? You can maybe manage lower margins, but if you're out of stock, you you just don't have the revenue, right? Yeah, so, exactly. And also, as we repeat many times, getting out of stock, especially on a platform like Amazon, means pretty much killing your uh, your SEO, killing your rank, killing your, you know, okay. because Amazon takes consideration of your stock. If you stay out of stock for too long, that means more than one or two weeks, you're pretty much done. It would take a lot of time, you know, to actually rank again properly. You have to spend a lot of money on PPC. You have to do a proper external traffic. You have to make sure that you're, you're, you actually have the right stock replenishment and everything in place. So, yeah, this is, this is an issue right now. I see everywhere, you know, people talking on, uh, you know, know how to minimize this uh the effects the bad effects uh of this mess uh the, you know the new rising costs uh supply chain and everything so what would you suggest what can sellers do and uh, maybe how can you help them yeah sure sure i mean uh, just just from a kind of high level perspective uh i think it's good to understand whether or not you you, you personally as an owner have um, uh, you know, have the expertise to 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 be fluent with all these things. Like, and if not, you know, it's definitely a good idea to hire, to hire an expert to to handle these things. So, some of the kind of few things that you can do, uh, as long as you kind of fluently understand what what's going on, right? Is say if you're shipping, if you're focusing on like lowering your costs, right, and you're shipping uh, from like maybe multiple suppliers, maybe you're you you know uh, have multiple LCL orders or air orders. Uh, you know, definitely consolidating those like smaller shipments into one FCL, uh, you know, has been a proven tactic, but it is also has never been more cost effective than today, right? So we are seeing uh, just by, you know, again, exactly, yeah, consolidating a few smaller shipments into one full, full container, we are seeing about 10 to 15 uh, thousand dollars in savings, like per each consolidation. Wow. Yeah. Right? So if you're shipping like multiple containers a month, then you just decide that just kind of multiple. And I guess like a side note on this, just just the way we kind of I we are thinking about it, right? In terms of like kind of the value of this sort of savings for your business, right? So you're not only like consider like if, if for instance if you're thinking about an exit at some point, maybe next year, maybe like in a few months, right? Maybe in two years, you know, the buyer is going to look at the sales history, right? And uh, or like your PNL history, and if you're sorry. Yeah, and so if you're able to like save just like even one thousand dollars this month and do it on every every month basis, that kind of multiplies by the by you know five to ten x these days, like and for, yeah. you know yeah. when, when it, at the point of sale. So that's can be very significant for your long term kind of business value and also you know just today for your current uh, margins, right? So maybe some other things that we could do uh, or you could do as a as a as a shipper. Um, so if you're talking about like, uh, cost savings, right. So, um, just from, uh, overall, uh, you know, definitely advising to like shop for rates every time. Like, so you may, you know, have had like your favorite rate forwarder that you have a like, great relationship with and, you know, have, has been reliable, but still, if like, you have to ask and you have to shop like every time these days, like just what it means is like requesting multiple quotes you know, uh, choosing the kind of lowest quote option. It maybe uh, if you're seeing that your uh, kind of favorite or go-to forwarder uh, is uh, not the lowest, you can, you know, tell them, hey, you know, friend, uh, there is the, you know, there's the other forwarder that's giving me a lower rate. I would like to keep the business with you. You know, we have a good relationship. Can you match, right? And that is just taking some extra steps. You know, uh, it also is important to, to uh, request rates in advance, like prior to your PO being ready yeah. to, you know, minimize your transit time and just like the time that you spend for placing your booking. I would say that actually getting, you know, multiple quotes where you can decide from is actually a very good point here. Uh, it is the same as getting a good, uh, a good supplier, you know. Uh, I see still a lot of questions in many groups or people just asking me, 
hey, should I trust my supplier on Alibaba? And then I went to another website like 1668 or 1688. I don't remember what's the name of that. And I found the same item, you know, half the price. So you should always, you know, double, triple check four times with different sources, with different service providers, because there might be, you know, a better one out there. Or also maybe get some agent to help you do this research, or maybe they have, why an agent is good, uh, not only on the supply you know, side, like getting your products, but also shipping your products, because they might have already a relationship that you don't have with your supplier, with your forwarder. So you might take advantage of that relationship that make you, would make you actually save a lot of money. Because as, uh, as, we, as we said already, saving 10,000, 15K a month is not, it's not really little. I mean, it's, uh, it's a really good, it's really good money that you can invest in advertising. You can invest in buying more products and you can invest, you know, multiplying, multiplying your business actually. Yeah. And the same logic, like, as you mentioned about the agent kind of works exactly with, with the forwarders, right? Right. So, um, you know, like hiring someone who, who kind of has the little network of forwarders and has a good relationship with them and knows kind of what to request from them uh, can be as important as hiring an, a, you know, a sourcing agent. So for instance, right, um, you know, you know that your suppliers may be close to one of the major China, China ports and you've always requested a quote from, I don't know, for instance, Ningbo, right? Or, you know, a different like ma major port never had a problem with it. But now, you know, the, the, the cost uh, from that main port, uh, the main port is congested. The cost is the highest from there. Uh, so some things that you could be doing is considering near uh, nearby ports you know, the trucking, uh, the leg of trucking can be uh, more, more uh, expensive and, and like you might, you might need to, you know, truck it to, to, to a farther distance, but that can result in, in, in savings and just getting space faster and just getting, you know, better transit times. So like a specific example that uh, one of our managers did, did, did recently, right? So for instance, like uh, X Puju port uh, rates were at 20K, like I, whereas uh, X Shaman port, rates for like 40 foot um, uh, FCL, uh, we're at 17,000. And just like by paying a little extra on trucking, like about 350 for trucking to Shaman instead of Peugeot, we are saving about 2650 or 2600 for, uh, for, for like that particular container, right? Which is- Yeah, uh, that's yeah, amazing. <laughs> saving 2600 bucks just for choosing a different port and also not risking that your container might get stuck because I'm thinking about, you know, ports like Ningbo, Xiamen, Shenzhen. I don't even want to think about Shenzhen right now, seriously. <laughs> they might be having, you know, very long queues. Like you would have to wait months to get your to get your products. And unfortunately, once again, this is one of the main, you know, problems. One of the most common problems right now for, for Amazon sellers, for any kind of seller. So try, this is a very good advice. I, I love it, actually. Try to to ship the the, the, the containers, the, the products from a different port. You might actually be surprised that it could actually work better. Yeah, 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 exactly. And same thing works uh, on the at the destination, right? So LA has been historically the busiest, most congested. You know, if you're saying that, the, you know, something's getting, you know, things are getting crazy in LA, consider shipping to Oakland or, or Portland or Seattle. Uh, although you have to make sure you choose uh, direct routing, right? So so you, you wanna make sure that the ship, when you're shipping, like if you're choosing that option to ship to Oakland, you wanna make sure that you book a, a vessel that doesn't stop off in LA, right? Because in that case, it doesn't, yeah. you know, it's like, what, what <laughs> would you do, right? So just, uh, there, there are much fewer, you know, there are fewer routings that are direct to those like less, uh like um supplementary ports or like yeah just just like other ports other than like the major la or maybe it's new, um east coast uh, that the new york newark is the analog there so so yeah just look at all the all the routing options and that's generally uh, uh a good strategy yeah just reconsider your routings right and then just like look at how, how you're shipping where you're shipping Another maybe like a little bit of a crazy uh, solution that uh, we've been looking at and we've, we've um, uh, been proposed by one of our uh, contractors is th that's only applicable though for those who are shipping to Europe, right? So if you're selling in Europe, that might be kind of a, a possible solution for you, right? So to, uh, you know, we have to, we sometimes forget that Europe and China are actually on the same continent, right? So you don't actually have to, go via ocean you can choose a truck 
to ship all the way from China, like Southeast Asia, Southeast China, to even like UK. You know, you can you can you can send a truck from China to UK. It's gonna uh, you know cost you, but the price is gonna be close to current ocean rates. So the price for 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 like a full truck, a uh, little bit um, larger than regular forty high cube, uh, is that about like thirty thousand uh, per truck right now? Uh, but the transit time is, is insane. It, it's it's about uh, you know twelve to fourteen days. So there, yeah. there are two drivers driving shifts, and they just go straight. You can you know with current technology, you can like GPS uh, track them and and then see where where they are. Yeah. yeah. So I found that a, 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 a cool yeah, one. that's interesting. Yeah, actually, the, the same continent is the Eurasian continent, right? So it can actually start from China and travel all the way, at least in Germany. Uh, there's actually a very good destination for, you know, especially for Amazon FBA sellers. And then they, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're using FBA, they can, you know, take care of everything. Uh, and also I would suggest, guys, we have some very good connection with some of the 3PL. We know probably the, the biggest 3PL in Europe. Uh, we will link it down so they can definitely help you with, uh, you know, taking care of your delivery because they have the biggest network only second to Amazon in Europe. They cover all the countries. So it's also, I mean, here we see as, you know, uh, doing the right business here is like putting the, the right piece of the puzzle, you know, like taking care of your supply chain, you know, your delivery, FBM, FBA, you always want to have FBM in place because you never know what's going to happen with FBA and you don't want to run out of stock as we said before. So, um, yeah, is there anything else that, uh, that we could do? We're talking about uh, 3PLs, for example. What can you say about that? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you uh, for the question. Uh, so let me just, uh, yeah. All right. So, yeah, regarding 3PLs, that's a good, that's a good uh, subject and a good point, right? So, you know, choosing your 3PL location wisely, that, that, that can like, change a lot, like, uh, for you. So we've seen sellers... Um, Say maybe they're from Florida, or maybe for some other reason they they have a, a 3PL location, like uh, they're using a 3PL at this like some some odd places, um, or just like inland. We'd say that just just like avoid inland. In most cases, it, it makes sense to avoid inland 3PL locations. Just try try to stay closer to uh, the, the main ports, or just like to 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 the coasts, um, right? To uh, lower your inland transit times. Uh, lower your, you know, inland logistics cost. Um, so consider, yeah, definitely like a lot, a, lot, a lot of the sellers, they are looking out in Southern California to stay close to Los Angeles. You know, there is lack of 3PL capacity in, in that market, right? So consider uh, going, uh, you know, to the next states like uh, Nevada or, or Arizona. So it's like still close enough to the port you know, the the just overall um, costs there are lower and yeah, the warehouse, uh, you know, rates are, are, are cheaper there and there there is capacity. Yeah. And then also, yeah, if you have like a large enough operation or just anyway, consider um, when you're shopping for a 3PL, when you're looking for a 3PL provider, uh, con uh, you know, uh, ideally you want to find someone who has like bi-coastal locations, right? So, Maybe your your preferred location would be California location, but uh, in case something crazy is happening in California, or in case you are maybe starting to source from from Europe, you have that option with the same provider to to ship to to New York or you know another uh, warehouse on the East Coast without having to uh, you know um, uh, add another contractor and and just like go go into that. So you know, ideal three PL provider I, I think should have like multiple locations um and you know obviously good rates good service but but yeah that that that, that location uh, of the 3pl is 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 what matters a lot for your overall costs your transit times and, and all that yeah um this is i think you know um, talking about 3pl it's also very important to have the right 3pl because not only you want to have you know your fbm in place but uh, what we're seeing is a lot of sellers right now are trying to get into this omni-channel approach. So we know that, you know, Amazon is a, a great place. You know, in the US is more than 50% of the product searches and product purchases. And uh, in Europe, it's on the way to be at half, even though it's not yet. But 
we we know that Amazon is great, but still there are a lot of new marketplaces that are popping out, especially yeah, since the past year. But even Walmart, for example, was already getting much larger and you know, a real threat, you know, really threatening Amazon since a couple of years already. So I remember since 2018 they were starting to to you know to evolve their selling platform, for example. And now there is more and more service providers that are, you know, getting into Walmart, uh, Helium 10, for example, and uh, other tools that are, you know, available both on FBA and Amazon and on Walmart also. So, and uh, the the cross marketplace, you know, uh, shipments and delivery is not going to be easy. We see that Amazon doesn't like to work anymore with Shopify, for example. So you need to have your, your own logistic uh, system in place. So having the right 3PL, it's going to make really the difference for you. And uh, it is very important to have the omni-channel approach. I'm not talking about at the beginning as an Amazon seller, you definitely want to establish an Amazon first, depending on your on your strategy. But at some point, you really want to be omni-channel. Let's also see what is going on, for example, with Chinese sellers. They have their account banned you know, for the reviews. And here, I'm not going to get into the details, but if something like this happens, you need to be ready to sell your product somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. To totally 100% agree. Um, yeah, with 3 pls exactly. That's, you, 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 you want to be thinking about like where, where you are selling now, where you want to sell in the future, see if that 3 pl potentially can cover your fulfillment needs. I mean, it's, it's, it's also... Um, okay to use like multiple fulfillment solutions too right i mean we do want to like be efficient we don't want to like maybe uh minimize your number of the contractors to you know for, for more uh, efficient operations uh but also yeah like if you're you know you know um doing your own fulfillment uh in addition to um amazon fulfillment yeah consider you know having a bulk of your cargo stored like a you know, at a like california warehouse or, or like a new jersey warehouse and then maybe uh, drip fitting some, some the inventory to uh, to fulfillment centers like Deliver that can distribute that inventory uh, you know across the country and uh, fulfill for your Shopify customers, for instance, uh, you know quickly and, and as as quickly as Amazon. Yeah. So Ivan, that was amazing. I think you know we we gave a lot of actionable tips here. Uh, tell us how you guys at Sellerplex can actually help Amazon sellers and e-commerce sellers. What can you can you can you do for them? What kind of help can you provide? Sure, sure. Yeah, thank you for the question. So, I mean, I mean, generally, uh, our our concept is yeah to help uh, owners kind of yeah uh, evolve from from like operating their business themselves to actually you know stepping out of and unplugging from the operations and being able to use their time more, more effectively to focus on things like business growth. But then also, yeah, just personal time. Yeah, you don't want to be spending all, all your days, you know, hand, handling things like that, that can be handled by by, by, by experts that are uh, essentially can be better than you at, at this and, and can, you know, be more effective uh, and more and, and provide better costs for your business and uh, without you having to, to deal with it, right? So uh, essentially, um, yeah, Cellplex, we, at Cellplex, yeah, we've, we've seen this work for, for many sellers, right? They're, they're kind of, in their head with, with with the supply chain, maybe having out of stock issues, not knowing how to how to handle some things, they they reach out or reach out to them, uh, you know, uh, start start handling things. And uh, our essential goal is to like yeah, create a, a an order balance uh, for 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 sellers. That means you know um, not run out of stock, but then also not be overstocked, which is also important, right? And we've seen uh, sellers, yeah, just literally like double their sales just because of that, right? So we've seen uh, uh, guys like uh, I think I can mention he, uh, Nathan from like Gold Coastal Business, right? So he's uh, he hired us about a year ago. He had out of stock issues. He didn't have like marketing problems. His listings were fine. He had a great product, but he had out of stock issues and, and just like the issues with issue the supply chain. He solved that problem. He never had a problem for for a year, and now he's he's doubled his business worth and, and exiting it. And just like being super helpful, super thankful to you know to to our team for, for yeah, doing that. that's amazing. So, so that's kind of very briefly, I guess, uh, what what we do in the supply chain uh, area. Yeah, that's really cool. So, guys, I suggest you get in touch with Ivan, with Nate, with the guys at Sellerplex. We will post all the information down there alongside with also how to maximize your uh, your business effectively. Everything that you might need is going to be in the in the description section of this. Uh, so Ivan, how can people get in touch with you? You have a, you know, email, LinkedIn, anything? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, 
So you can, if you go to like just sellerplex.com, you can schedule a call and that will go, go to my Calendly. Then also my simple email is like Ivan, I-V-A-N at sellerplex.com. So feel free to tell. I'll, uh, yeah, uh, welcome. Yeah. You're Amazing. Welcome. Yeah, <laughs> that was cool. So that's great. Uh, do you have any any travel plan for the future? Is you're gonna join any conference? Uh, well, how is actually the you know the Amazon FBA you know scenario in Russia? This is something that I'm really curious about. Do you guys have any conference? Do you have any community of FBA sellers? Yeah, it's, thanks. Yeah, it's, it's it's growing. I'm seeing like a lot a lot you know more people from Russia get involved. You know, there's no Amazon presence here. We have like different other marketplaces, but no, no Amazon presence. But yeah, I'm seeing that there's more interest in that. There are kind of sellers, uh, successful sellers kind of popping up uh, here and there. I just talked to another seller from St. Petersburg. I was super surprised because we rarely get, you know, uh, Russian Russian speaking seller or Russian like base sellers yeah. uh, approach us. But yeah, I was happy to to hear about her success. And um yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot, a lot of good stuff, and like I think even like stronger um, FBA seller community in Ukraine actually. Um, yeah, for yeah. one reason or another, it's like uh, booming there. So, yeah, I, I actually yeah. know that the, there's been a very good uh, event right there, a very nice conference. I don't remember the name right now, but uh, yeah, Ukraine. I know it's uh, it's full of uh, good good names there, good sellers. Also in Eastern Europe, maybe because of the location, you know, maybe because of the cheaper workforce there. There's a lot of agencies also in Eastern Europe uh, between um, you know Romania and uh serbia so yeah mm-hmm. it's uh, definitely good okay ivan this was amazing it was my pleasure we always keep our videos super short you can see that it's around 25 minutes but super action-packed mm-hmm. and uh packed with information and i just can't wait you know to to see you soon and to have some people reaching out directly to you yeah thanks thanks david yeah it's awesome thanks, uh, thanks for having me cheers all right have a good day bye-bye yeah.